Hey guys, welcome to a, another commentary done by Diggity. Up right hand corner we have BSL Jess, which I think is Jessica SC1, I think. Pops around. She is, uh, I think she is a fairly proficient Protoss player. Around the 1800, 1900 level MMR. I am not sure though, not 100%. Hoender, bottom left hand corner. That's kind of the mustard yellow Protoss. This is on Eclipse, and the other side of BSL Chobo League Round of 16 Group D. Ball advancing to the winner's match. So basically, whoever, and just so you guys know the format of these tournaments, because just in case you're coming into this new, which I doubt it, <laughs> if you've been watching this for a long time. But um, this is fresh, by the way. I haven't watched this game as of yet. Uh, another PvP. This is an all Protoss group, I just realized. I should have checked that before I dove into it. Pylon um, from both players. Forward Pylon. For Jess, I kind of like the forward pylon to be honest. The one thing is, is if you lose your ramp, it's like you end up. But as far as like offensive engagements and things that might get by in misclicks, it's like that pylon can draw your opponent off. Uh, and you can always like, you and it also kind of gives you an advantage for some city if you end up outnumbered. I wonder why more Protoss don't do this. I would like to hear that from the more skilled Protoss players that might be watching this or might be catching this later. Because you can't, because what you can do is, if, okay, you're outnumbered on the ramp, your front's breach, you can try to lead them through this gap and then engage in a one on one, and then they're hitting your building, and it's almost like you have that additional shield and whatnot. So, anyway, fresh play from Jess, although your SimCity is a little bit different moving from there. Both players opening up gateway first. Uh, anyway, just so you know how the format goes, this is, I don't know what to call this, I call it standard format, double gateway open. Opening for just this is also like having it here instead of back here allows those uh, zealots to kind of press forward. This is um, double gate before second pylon, so basically this is going to be a an aggressive zealot attack is what we're going to see out of this um, gas and additional pylon from Hoender. So he's going to be relying on zealots and dragoons versus just pure zealots. So it's going to come down to a micro zealot versus zealot dragoon composition fight, and we'll see who gets the better part of that attack. And that's, again, why I kind of like this... I don't know. Anyway, we'll see how it plays out. Anyway, the, the format is you have the winner... You have the, the, four, the four players, two players, two. The winner of the winner's match, they go... The winners of each match go, and they fight in the winner's match. That's what I'm trying to say. Whoever wins that advances. If you lose, you still have a second opportunity. You go to the loser's match. If you lose that, you're out. If you win, you go into a final match. The loser of the winner's match plays the winner of the loser's match in one final match. And... Whoever advances from there continues overall. And that also allows additional seeding and things like that. We are seeing the cybernetic score, by the way. But this is going to be three zealots initially. I think might be a reaction to this. Three zealots are going to make their way out. Basically, if you're going like this... Oh, and a gas steal. It's rare to see a gas steal PvP. Uh, might, might pay off. Because that's minerals... I'm kind of curious about this maneuver, actually. And this is another one where I want to hear from skilled Protoss players, because the thing is, is like, yes, okay, you've denied gas, but at the same time, you need those minerals to produce units in the early game here. And what you are basically saying is, is I can out-micro you with superior unit counts on the ground off fewer gateways. So I al almost feel like that gas deal, rather than putting down an additional gateway, could be the difference, but... Right there, Jess has a two-on-one attack, and because this Zealot was kind of sneaking back around, that could be the difference in this in this match altogether. So with the ramp, it might be okay. The Dragoon has... Oh, and the Probe trying to sneak out and do some micro from behind. One Zealot is going to get taken out. Just still having trouble with the Zealots on the ramp. That's one problem with doing this two-gate opener on a map like this, is when you can hold that front door ramp, it becomes very difficult. Although she microed this really well, you can still has a lot of shield. But it looks like an opt thing to get a second gateway down. This is going to put her at a serious tech disadvantage, though. The fact that she wasn't able to get anything done with that initial Zealot attack. She's actually just about even on probes. So I guess the gas deal is going to actually pay off for Hollander. And he's going to have kind of an interesting... Oh, I'm curious how that'll play out. This is turning into a very interesting match. Just once again trying to push forward, but the, the moment's gone. Really, if she's going to press through, she needed to do it much, much earlier. Now there's going to be two Dragoons that can deal with the Zealots on the front. And also, she opted to not continue... Like, wow. So we're seeing this instead. Hoender going for a proxy robotics facility to finish this out. That is crazy. So he's definitely going to go Reavers. 
which decimate zealots. So with this gas deal, he's like, okay, I know that you backed off of this attack, which suggests you went Nexus. Your tech is going to be severely delayed. I'm going to go ahead and go this proxy robo. So not only am I going to be able to range your cannons, the units you have on the ground, these zealots that just end up sitting in clumps like this, are just going to get rocked by the splash damage that I am able to levy on you. And I think that might be a game-winning maneuver. Wow. There's the robo. Just sitting out with this zealot just in case this happens, where oftentimes people move out with their the entirety of their army. Hoender showing some good skill, though. Recognizing that's a possibility, recognizing there could be a sneaky probe scout underneath, and sending out kind of skeleton forces in both locations to see if he can find this exact thing from Jess. So, I've seen Hoender around. I did not know his level of skill. Jess, though, also showing some skill. She is going to see this proxy and might have an opportunity right now if she moves all of these zealots while this position is undefended, and that could swing her right back in this match. Probe attacking, the zealots moving down. This is Hoender's going to have to micro his way into this. This is the other thing. He has things to defend, so this might cost him now. Working on that pylon. Just going to ignore everything else. As soon as that pylon's down, he can re-engage on top of this entire army. Needs to be careful, though. Jess is just going to retreat, though. She doesn't feel like she wants to engage on these zealots. Feels like Hoender has enough of them where he'd be able to micro against it. Now Hoender has an opportunity where he can place an additional pile on. The thing is, is I don't know that Jess... This is also going to supply cap him, which is another critical thing. Ooh, Jess, you're misrallied. Pull that back. Get it back. All right. Dragoon back on the front. She needs to pump a lot of Dragoons and with some haste. And it, it, it's actually still anybody's game. It's going to come down to this defense. Unfortunately for her, this is a superior Dragoon count on the front. And I think a superior army overall. And that Reaver is going to be able to just levy shots. But she has a Nexus up. And she can get these additional gateways down. I think she's reading this correct. And if she can just allow those cannons to just fall. And keep that army alive. Eventually she's going to have enough Dragoons where she might be able to... This is going to be tough though. Because you can see this is kind of the gap that she's going to want to have to press through. Also, Hoender plopping his own cannons down to get sort of a contain. He's getting his Nexus. And keep in mind, Jesse did in fact go for just pure gateways rather than tech. I do like the Dragoons up on the high ground to sort of to deny this. And this is the thing, Reavers melt these cannons rapidly. As you can see, three shots, they're gone. And honestly, two shots and a single Dragoon shot. And that's all she wrote. Plus the splash. And if he takes this pylon down, that will depower that top cannon. Opting to work on that. Now flooding the front. And did Jesse miss the opportunity? Is the timing there or not? Hoender backing off a little bit. Shield battery here as well. Additional cannons being placed. Just trying to buy all the time she can. Additional Dragoons stationing up. Now plopping down. Might be able to pick off that Reaver. No! Not quite... Okay, does get the Reaver and backing off now. Still another Reaver on the field. It's not over yet. Just has reinforcements on the top ground. A cannon on the on the high ground as well. Needs to defend this Nexus. That's several Dragoons, but these Dragoons could be cleaned up. It's that Reaver that's a big problem. Hoender has positioned that Reaver perfectly in the productive cusp. Just diving on top of that Reaver. Might lose those Dragoons as a result. Back to the cannon line. Shields recharging the Reaver. Keeping it alive. So Hoender able to, to pick off additional, and this Nexus is exposed. Hoender his, has his own natural expansion up. The Reaver gets picked off. Hoender going to have to back off with the rest of these Dragoons. The thing is, is he still has a contain on Jess. Jess still has this mining disrupted. The one big advantage for Jess now, she's got 30 probes versus just the 19 from Hoender. So if she can persist in this match, and if she can continue producing units, she will have the superior economy. She needs to be mining, though. And this will translate into, this will overcome that tech disadvantage and will turn into a superior position. But it's the timing, it's the micro. Moving out, trying to pick off what she can while that Reaver is down. Focus firing some of these 
units. I think that shield battery, yeah, it's out of recharge after that last Reaver engagement. So he's going to be able to clean up this contain on the front, still losing a lot of Dragoons to do so. But I think that is a worthwhile exchange. Because if she can establish this front, if she can go ahead and get these units out. Oh, there's GG from Hoender, realizing that, yeah, not going to be enough. Colleague <laughs> doesn't want to fight it out. It's like, I'm, I'm going to lose. Still chatting from there. I'll let them fight it out. Going to Polypoid, apparently. Um, essentially, just breaking that contain was going to be able to take out that proxy tech. Taking out that proxy tech was the one advantage that Hoender had. Nice play by Jess. Nice play. Doing exactly what needed to be done to come back and seal this match. Well played. Well played. Hope you guys enjoyed that one. We will move on to match two between Jess and Hoender momentarily.